then Muslim communities started to arm up uh, with knives. But the one thing you can say with absolute certainty is it's not going to go away. Uh, we've got parts of our inner city now that have become completely Muslim dominated. They come into our communities, they break down our communities. Douglas Murray examines the widening gap in culture and ideology, as well as the mounting dissatisfaction in British cities. Primary problem in the UK, as in Europe, in recent years has been the total unwillingness of the political and other classes in the UK to address deep, deep concerns of the public. And when people said in recent days, how could anyone leap to such a conclusion that the attacker would be, and you go, because everyone's seen this before. He contends that ignoring basic problems like mass immigration and integration difficulties just makes matters worse by creating new obstacles. Murray claims that a major factor in the current issue is the West's propensity for moral relativism and its refusal to evaluate different cultural norms objectively. In a similar vein, Nigel Farage has repeatedly alerted the UK government to these same worries, but it seems that his warnings have gone mostly unheeded. Faraj notes that the increasing Muslim population in some inner-city districts of Britain has unnerved some British citizens with its rapid demographic shift. He underlines how people who voice concerns about immigration, legal or illegal, are frequently written off as radicals, which he feels creates a risky precedent for future discussions. Faraj comments address the more general discussion of how immigration and cultural shifts are changing the UK. Some share his belief that this nation is changing too quickly, while others are concerned that his remarks could sow discord and terror. Notwithstanding differences in viewpoints, immigration and British identity continue to be hotly contested subjects in the UK. Farage also thinks that a lack of transparency, especially in the wake of the terrible killings of three young girls, is to blame for the public's ire and the general turmoil. He makes the argument that the tensions might have been prevented if officials had been more forthcoming with information. His detractors contend that his remarks could widen rifts, while his supporters view his position as a defense of free speech and the requirement for accountability. Uh, we've got parts of our inner city now that have become completely Muslim dominated, uh, and that has led to a lot of British people saying, what the hell's going on? that even dares to question levels of immigration, legal or illegal, into Britain, that that's extremist, then you start to set a narrative for a future generation. Elon Musk is aware of the possible repercussions of limiting free speech after witnessing comparable acts by political officials. Farage emphasizes how crucial it is to protect the right to free speech and cautions that the present policies may result in a major curtailment of individual liberties. The participation of well-known individuals like Musk broadens the discussion and brings the possible effects of these policies to the attention of people all around the world. Leaders from all over the world are still complaining about the UK government's strategy, and some believe that if these problems are not resolved, civil unrest may break out. The public's growing preference for more stringent immigration laws makes the situation unstable. How do you feel about these developments? Tell us in the comments section below.